I don't know if break your arms and then you break the arms. I don't know if break that. Um, then, but much warmer with the other areas in the northwest. We could see a couple of the
Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay, so we have some minutes to approve. Has everyone had an opportunity to review both the June 25th and the July 19th minutes? Yes, yes, yes. I am going to abstain from the last meeting minutes because I did not attend. Okay. Uh, um, and I have a motion then if there are no edits to approve the June 25th meeting minutes. I will make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from June 25th, 24th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to approve the July 9th meeting minutes? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So who do we have joining us today? Well, Madam Chair, we have your colleague, uh, Mr. Peonisa. We have uh, Nancy Caggiano, and we have Jeremy Oakes. Hello and welcome. And we also have Ben. Ben Pierce. <laughs> Hello. Has anyone received any community input or correspondence? Um, I've actually heard a lot of good feedback about all the work you had done on the classroom inside. Same. Wonderful. It's nice that people are seeing that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. nice that people are seeing. Yeah, well, it's very evident when you drive past. Like, and it looks really nice with all of the additional um, equipment that you that we have out there, and then all of the additional like garden beds and the new trees that were planted. Lovely. And if I may, I'd like to uh, just give some credit to uh, Diana Brandy, who um, we hired to do that work, as well as uh, DL Landscaping. Mm -hmm. That helped out. That's great. And that was um, done with the uh, use of some of uh, the last of our COVID money uh, for with the idea of uh, health and wellness uh, for the students so that they could have more enjoyment at that area. And we also lost some trees recently due to disease. And so that was an effort to replace them. So nice. Any other community input? Would anyone that be interested? out there remotely like to speak. Let me see any hand. Okay. Moving on to the examination and authorization for payment of bills. Hey folks, there's a package of good bills going around and uh this as Tony Superintendent Tony B would say is fairly typical this time of year. And you prove you would be acting upon a total of 124 for 1995. The Home Depot Pro or Custodial Supplies. Verizon is a combination of um, cell phone reimbursement and school phone. Um, specialty for the school supplies. Embry Elevator is a name and inspection. Northeast Harbor Consortium, the 10,000 is a lack of a better word, an anti up fee. Whether you had any kids there or not, to be a member of it, cost you 10,000 just to have access to it. And it's separate than what you may pay for tuition. So everybody pays 10,000 right up front. And then if you send a child, it's at whatever that full rate is, even though it's reduced compared to any other outside program you might have. Uh, and then there's the first set of bills for the Northeast Consortium kids that we have placed. Amazon School Supplies. Uh, Kevin just talked about Diane Brandy. Mm -hmm. uh, Healy Bus is the first monthly payment for their contract. Remember, that includes a little surcharge built into it from last year because of the pickup issues at Swamp Star for kids. And that has to be rectified. Uh, National Grid is power related. A1 Exterminators is um, health friendly, safe rodent type traps that are placed around. So good for anyone except a rodent who may go into that. It doesn't fare really well with that. 
um, seen collaborative the special ed Easter Seals of Maine is a special ed placement. Work and gear is custodial uniforms by their agreement. Learning Without Tears is a new program that uh, Principal Andrews got approved. Action Ambulance is actually instead of transportation. Um, quality of a bullet is having to do with uh, library books. Uh, is where we had received contracted services for the summer occupational therapies. Now you have a occupational therapist on your staff. Yeah, carpet cleaning, one hand lumber is custodial supplies. The Northeast Air Solutions is uh, to do with the air conditioning system. Uh, Mass Association of Superintendents is your measure of uh, your membership. Um, Robert Debo is his cell phone reimbursement and his fingerprinting. And the discrimination and harassment solutions has to do with a legal fee. Probably before and it was encumbered from last year's budget. So okay. that money is not coming out of active money now. It was held over mm -hmm. as a estimate. I think it may have been a little bit higher than that that you actually encumbered. That's the final bill, the final report from the matter involved was uh, completed. Right. So you're you're paid in full okay. with regard to those services. And that would constitute the total of 124, 419, 95. So 124, 19, Okay, there's just a typo on this document that we signed, so I just crossed it out and I'll initial it, okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to approve the um, invoices for the meeting of 827-24, which come to the total of $124,419.95. Second. second motion. Excellent. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to the superintendent's report. Okay. There's uh, two or three items on it. One is there is the final determination of the free cash amount from the uh, on public schools to the town of Nahant. Uh, we floated around for a while, and where is the figure? Eighty. Uh, I'm going to find that. Well, I think we come back to that. I thought I had it written. No, I'll find it. It's more information, but it's eighty fix and change. Isn't the two or three hundred thousand? Is that something? Uh, in terms of my meeting with the Swampscott superintendent, I went over there and met with their middle school principal and the superintendent, who I knew pretty well from my time in Rockport on the 7th of August. Um, didn't even have to plead. I just said, it'd be great if we could cooperate on some things. And they said, sure, we'll do that. Uh, cross country, our fifth and sixth graders are able to participate in that now. Uh, we've got uh, several kids involved in that. I actually won't give the names, but I'll tell you the numbers. Oh, that's wonderful. That is great. Yes. For cross country, we have two sixth graders and one fifth grader who are interested in doing it. Great. Um, outdoor track, um, they approved that for the spring. Assuming that the relationship worked well in the fall across country. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are two kids interested in that, both fifth graders, both fifth grade girls, actually, in that particular group. Um, they also allowed our fifth and sixth graders who would become eligible for the National Honor Society. I think Beth brought it up last time that uh, that would be something maybe to look into. And uh, they will run service type opportunities throughout the year for the kids at the middle school, which begins over there in grade five and six. And our kids would normally have access to that. So when they go to apply for National Honor Society entrance, our kids didn't necessarily have a long list of activities they participate in. So our kids would be invited to join in those activities when they hold them. And we have uh, two fifth graders and one sixth grader interested in that. 
They also said they're very interested in doing shared PD, but uh, schedules would have to be synchronized so that our half day would have to be their half day, our full oh, okay. day would have to be their full yep. day. But would they have no problem with us picking back and on their PD or or coming to ours? But there'd have to be synchronization. <laughs> also, will we can show me a nice conference room where I can meet with uh, students that were now in the Bruce Miller High School in Swampstead and do the exit entrance interview kind of questions about how are things going, uh, what you miss, uh, you know, what kind of gaps were out there from your perspective, and um, what's good about Swampstead, what did you change, and all those kind of things. And I'll probably do the first one in October and then make another one after the first of the year, probably three times during the year, just to give kids a chance on a bread pizza and just oh, invite them to come. It's great. Whoever, whoever comes to the So, yeah. We used to do the senior exit interviews at the high school I was at. Maine. Those kids were very upfront about their experience and serious about it and professional about it. You'd say to them, you know, you're, you're done. Uh, don't you want the school to be better for those behind you? And they took that pledge and would say, yeah, this, this was good. I wish we'd had that. Um, they even went into sort of who their better instructors were and who uh, might have been um, able to improve in certain areas. It's all confidential, and we just carry it back. And I think it was their party gift back to the, that high school. So I think the same kind of thing should be there for your kids to talk about their experience all over. So they are going to allow that. They also talked about allowing teacher exchanges and curriculum synchronization. They're very interested in being part of that. On September 3rd, which is next Tuesday, first day we come back from the long weekend, uh, Matt Morneau is coming over from the Hong, uh, Police Department to do an hour long presentation on school safety type issues and lockdowns, not only as a review for present staff, but as a uh, new information session for the new hires. And then I'd like to publicly thank uh, DPW Director Zach Taylor for responding and getting a contracted service to and paint the lines out front and made them wider. It's a complaint that you parked there, got an SUV, didn't get your doors open in front of the school. So they mm -hmm. eliminated a couple of spots and widened those lines out. And I noticed that they had done the, uh, the parking lot at the door four side mm -hmm. as well. Uh, they couldn't get to that initially because we had graciously allowed Trailers to be parked there and then became a beautiful summer home. And uh, the individual that put him up that home is interested in making a donation to the school. Oh, great. So we said, That's wonderful. Or power to you, and uh, we'd love to have that. Oh, so it's very wonderful. Excellent sort of win win kind of situation. Well, I greatly appreciated that my car fix it so yeah. fit into the space this morning. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and two other things that I have are the parent and student um, survey response to me has improved a little bit. I extended the deadline to the first part of September. And, uh, we had a total of 19 parents who gave us feedback, and uh, it went from just one staff member to now seven, Great. which is mostly teachers. Um, I gave all you folks access to be able to see the responses. But it's different than your survey that you did that you're going to redo in the spring. It was more from my entry knowledge. And uh, I don't think there was any new issues that, that sprung up. You should have gotten a link to both of those surveys to be able to read those responses. Rob, did you say that um, you're going to continue trying to get more teachers? I, only, I, I love that you did the, well, the opening survey. I think that's so smart as a superintendent yeah. to do. And I, I just was like, I wish more teachers than seven had responded because I think we have, what do we have, 30 staff total? 30 staff, 14 uh, teachers. And it went out to everybody. Mm -hmm. so we still have time. Yeah. I think in the so part great. of that survey, one of those right. questions had them identify where they support staff or teachers. Yeah. 
I think there's only one support staff. So right. that means six active teaching because staff members. The, the new ones, right. the, the, they wouldn't have any They're ability to respond to that. Yeah. So there were three or, three or four of those. A couple were just the tail end of the year. I think you got 75% of the teaching staff that responded. And um, some were long comments. Yeah, yeah no, no. no. That was good, and some were pretty short responses. Yeah. So is it is it closed now mm -hmm. for the for the I staff? Sent, other staff? Uh, I haven't put the closure in the okay. link, but I think I said September, probably this Friday. This Friday. Like that. Meaning in two in three days. So it's going to be closed, so right. that yeah. I would I just, I, be able like, to yeah. look at the results, and I could certainly come back and issue a report yeah. at the next meeting of the themes. Yep. Without going into you know the trends and themes. Yeah. And I think you'll find that they interface with yeah. the kind of issues that, that you folks have talked. I think if you could do another push just to see. For some of the people that didn't respond, I think it would be a yeah. good idea to try to get the number up a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, and because it's an opening survey, it probably doesn't matter whether it's yeah, more it's teachers old. or especially the folks that are not teachers to get input, you know, yeah, because that was less. To get the closure so I can right. Mm -hmm. And, and follow up. You deserve to have some closure in the future, but yeah. Um, can I go back to? I had a couple of questions about some of the things you reported on before, and one yeah. comment, the comment is. Um, I was overjoyed to see the oh, the the door open to some of the blood swamps that has yes. you know um, not just the honor society which wasn't wasn't me but I was a lab supporter of it I think it might have been um, right. related as a as a public input I think right? oh okay yeah. maybe yeah. Um, and um, I love like you may have another fifth grader on your cross country offerings so because um, my son is interested I just wanted to have a quick conversation with him and make sure that was going to be okay but. Um, but I love that. I just I, I think that's exactly the type of thing that we should do. I love the idea of like um, doing some PD and sharing those resources together. Um, feels like the right thing to do. That's a um, step for those kids too. You know, I mean, yeah. you have a fifth grader. They're gonna go over and go four days a week in swamps with kids they don't necessarily know, and that's a great yeah big time good adult. Right, it, it's totally great. Um, and I think it's the type of thing that you know. Um, is going to be engaging on a lot of levels for us. So I really, um, yeah, I really appreciated that. I um, there is as you were talking about, um, you went from talking about those opportunities to something else that made me think of numbers and just you know as a fifth grade parent watching the numbers dwindle down, you know, um, and there has been a lot of conversation about that. There are only four boys left in the fifth grade right now, and the class is gone. From like I think nineteen to in I mean four left just in the last few months like a couple months before school ended and then three over the summer, and so you know that's definitely being watched by parents out there and there has not been a formal please bring this to school committee comment, but at every gathering I'm at in the hunt over the past you know couple, two to three weeks people are talking about um that and just um oh no it was I didn't even use so that led up to a suggestion is. Are you also, are, could you do exit interviews with families that have opted to leave, you know, and, um, or maybe could somebody at the Johnson School, just so that we can learn the reasons why, um, you know, that parents are choosing one thing over another, and they may be more free to talk about that as they are leaving, right, and similar to what you said about the high school students wanting to give back, you know, there, I know some of the families who have left, and I know that they have, like, strong um, feelings of, of care for the Johnson School. Um, and we should learn from what could have been different. And maybe some things we wouldn't be able to make different, but some things I bet we could. Yeah, yeah I think I could probably yeah. offer either a face to face or a phone call or right. one of those anonymous type surveys. Exactly. Or, yeah. You know. uh, yeah, and truthfully, I didn't know that the numbers had dropped in their class until today when I saw that there was 12. And so I knew of one child that was leaving right before school ended, but I think four three or four more since then. So I was kind of shocked to learn that today. Um, so that would be helpful, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I may, um, we have, a, I have a student transfer survey outgoing. Um, so I have a, a Google form that I've used in the past when we've had the, a, a blip and it asks where you're going, 
Uh, it asks, uh, what's the most significant reason for looking for a different school? Uh, are there programs? And then it's an open response question. So um, I could start with that. Would that be helpful? Since I met some families that left? Yeah. Yeah. My last item is that uh, at the meeting on September 24th, I will be away at my daughter's wedding. Oh, oh that's all you're going to zoom in to that meeting. Uh, sorry, which one? Actually be in the month. Yeah. Okay. But if I can, if, if it's okay to zoom in, because that we have to change the 23rd? date of uh, 24th. Of oh, September? September. Yeah. Would you like to change? Oh, no, it is so that you don't want to have to worry about oh, zooming. Right. I'm fine. It's okay. Is the wedding not dead? The wedding on Saturday. It's all sorts of things. No, it's not all, but there's. I mean, I don't mind. We change it. I don't mind changing it either. Right. That would actually help me because I have a work event that night that I was debating skipping. To right. attend the meeting, but so I wouldn't oppose that either. Okay, so that leaves. Have you ever skipped the meeting? In the no. summers, we have summer sounds in Texas. Summer, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I and mean, there's an opening enrollment report and those kind of things, so they'll probably create for them. I would, uh, so our next meeting is on the 10th. Yeah, so that yes. whole week for me is going to be where I'm going to have to both days on either side. That's so I could do any time week. Yeah. I think it would be hard to do back to back weeks. Yeah. Yes. You go week to week wouldn't make sense. You so could, could we do, we could do like could we do like the does it have to be a Tuesday, I guess is the question. No, as long as it's been this Until mid October, we would have to run live. Have to be a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Because what if we did the thirtieth, like bumped the twenty fourth, and did the Monday the thirtieth? I should probably do that. Monday the thirtieth would be fine. That would be better. Kevin, that's yeah. fine. Me, Monday, I so. yeah. Yeah. Greg, does that work for you? Back. You come back then on the eighth, right? I could do either the twenty third or the thirtieth. Okay, sorry, I'm looking ahead too. Um, let's do the 30th. I think yeah, that would be good instead of doing it week after week, right? The 23rd would be the day before we normally would be doing it, so that was the only reason oh, I, I thought, see. yeah, you know, move it ahead one day to the 23rd, and then it's a day before we would be doing it. 30th would work perfect if, if he, Greg can do the 30th. Oh, because you're away that whole week. The 30th works fine for me, that's okay. that's fine. Yeah, that's All right, fine. let's just do that. Let's do that. So I'm not sure if we I do. Um, I would like to propose. Sure. Mm -hmm. I would like to propose that we change this uh, school committee meeting from Tuesday, uh, 9 24 24 to Monday, 9 30 24. Do you have a second? Second. So All in favor? Aye. Aye. I appreciate that. Enjoy sure. your daughter's wedding yes. festivities. <laughs> Where is she getting married? Yes, for our parents. Beautiful. That's exciting. And as you said, family comes first. Yeah. That would be it. My report and then be separate these out. Kevin's yep. a separate item. That's the most important. With that, huh? Well, thank you, Mr. Lebo, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to share uh, an update. We had a lot of activity at the school over the summer. Um, before I get started, let me add a couple things to my report that I did not include. We have open house coming up. That's Wednesday, September 4th. And that is starting at, I'm saying doors open at 545 for a prompt six o'clock start. Prior to that, we are also having an event um, for parents called Navigating the Cyber World. And I sent an invite out to parents today. I'll also be inviting Swamp Scott parents to attend and educators as well as um, Nahant educators to attend. Uh, and it's about it's from Ma uh, Massachusetts Partnership for Youth. And again, that, that starts at Wednesday at 5. Um, so you can go this, uh, a, week, um, a week from tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, September 4th. Thank you. Also that night, the YMCA is going to hold an open house here uh, at the school, 515 to 715. 
So if there's any families that are at the open house that night that would like to meet and greet the folks from the Y who are going to be running the after school, after school program, they are, um, you are welcome to come and meet with them, talk to them about their program and their offerings. It's also the night we'll be having the book fair. So oh this goodness. is going to be a, an all around carnival at the Johnson School. Love it. Lots to see, lots to do. And um, it'll be the usual fair with the open house. Uh, I'll give a brief overview of the school year, followed by two programs by the teachers that will be identical. And then there'll be additional time to attend the uh, the fair or the uh, visit with the Y. What's the date what? on that, Mr. Andrews? September 4th. Um, that'll be starting, the, the all the events start at 5, and we'll probably wrap up by 7.30. Definitely wrap up by 7.30. And we're starting to use Parent Square more for that. So I did an RSVP for that. Uh, for the cyber world, I'll do them on separate nights. I don't want to blast everybody in one night, but kind of sprinkle those out in the next few days uh, so that folks can see what's on their calendar. Um, related to that, we started using the digital form feature in Parent Square. So you are not seeing a welcome back to school packet with things to fill out that we already probably have on our file somewhere. Uh, so you'll instead, you're instead getting forms that ask you to uh, recognize the student handbook policies and so forth. And so hopefully um, you're finding that to be uh, more user friendly. Uh, and then uh, to the uh, formal report. In the area of students, families, and community, as I mentioned, um, after school program, uh, I've been meeting with them. I am running what I'm calling the interim after school program. Um, so this is the in, in between time, not at all, Thank you. not at all. It's hard, it's hard to staff these programs. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, we're continuing to find that in education as well as in after school world. But um, we do have a site coordinator in Sarah, Sarah Osborne. Um, the Y is in the process of onboarding her, but in the meantime, she's working for the school. And, um, and Julie Weber is helping out as well. So two familiar faces yeah. for the students as we open. The summer enrichment program went fabulously. I think um, I really enjoyed it. I was able to use a lot of lessons that I developed over the years in my science background with the students to get them excited about coming to school each day. And they seemed engaged and, um, and did some learning as well. I have uh, some things to report about uh, in the area of technology. We rolled out our IMAX. You can see them here. There's uh, one of them. All the classroom teachers each have a new iMac on their desk to speed things up. That came about from uh, last year's efforts. Uh, in addition, we were able to use some ESSER 3 funds to purchase iPad minis that classroom teachers will have and a pencil, an iPad pencil that they'll use for dibbles. That's the reading assessment. They'll use that for attendance. They're also going to be able to use that to control their iMac and a slideshow on the screen. It's going to work sort of like a smart board where they could write something on their iMac, I mean, on their iPad, and then the projector will show it on the screen. Uh, they can also use it like a document camera, so they can turn the camera on and, and hold it over a student work. Um, so there's going to be some professional development around that. Uh, we'll be getting um, nine of those. And, and those, those the work would bounce up on the screen? Yes. So the iMac is going to, the, the iPad is going to mirror the iMac, and the iMac projects to the screen. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, well, I'm excited about that. Um, in addition, uh, special education staff members will uh, be receiving MacBooks for their use on their uh, special ed reports. I often, I see the special ed staff showing up to meetings with their own devices, which are we're welcome to use, and I'm happy they're having them. Um, typically, they're a little bit older, they purchase them themselves, not provided by the school, and we had an opportunity to do that here. Uh, again, through some um, final ESSER funds. In the area of curriculum and instruction, we're adding digital math this year. Um, we've had digital math in the bat in, in the past with everyday math, but again, um, the state is closing out the ESSER funding this month, and so uh, we need to finish using up what we have. And so we'll have licenses K to six for students to access the online component of everyday math. That's in addition to IXL. Uh, in the area of buildings and grounds, um, I have to say Jose Garcia has done a fantastic job getting the building ready for the school. Uh, he's painted uh, many classrooms. Uh, the entire sixth grade classroom got painted. The art rooms, second grade, and the first grade 
and the stem rooms, uh, the front wall was painted because those ones get the most wear. Uh, so he got around to them. He stripped door 11 and 12, took them all the way down to bare metal and put new paint back up. Looks great. Uh, he worked on the cafeteria wall and the library wall. We had to waterproof the wall because they, they leak water from the outside or not, I should say seep. It's not a leak, it's a seep through the concrete. So we put a concrete sealer on there, so scraped them, concrete sealer, and then painted. So he's done a lot of great work, and we were able to do that because we had not just Jose, but also Vinny and James all at the same time in a period of time, as well as a, a, a former alumni of the school uh, who was helping. So we had a, a nice team over the summer. Uh, on the next page, I have the, uh, the grounds work that we've done over the summer. Uh, the boulder scramble was installed. That is uh, funding through CPC money or CPA, CPA money, rather, uh, Community Preservation Act. We had a, a $15,000 grant for that. Uh, so we actually came in under budget and uh, put boulders in the forest playgrounds. We also added uh, a pine tree there because we're losing some of the pine trees as they age out, we think. We're not really quite sure what's happening, but. Uh, we want to make sure that we'll have trees there in the future. So you got to plant a tree if you lose a tree. Uh, I have a picture of the interpretive sign. Those were donated to the school by the Garden Club as part of that grant. Um, and then the last picture so shows a cleared hillside that was full of invasive species. This had rows of multiflora and um, other vines. We saved the few trees that were in there, and we hope they'll spread. The main goal was to get the thorns out and the invasive things that, you know, for these, this Rosa multiflora was originally planted for birds to eat the berries in the 40s, but they don't like those berries. They don't like nesting in there. Uh, they, they kill other plants. And so um, the uh, landscaping was able to remove those for us. Uh, so that was some great work. On the flash road side of the playground, we had uh, three gardens and so well, six garden, actually about three garden habitats. It was actually six garden habitats, uh, two sets of three. Uh, each with uh, the idea is to not just have a tree, but have a tree with shrubs around it that you'd find in a forest and then it plants around that. So it's not a formal garden like you might see in a, a house. Uh, the idea is to rehabilitate this area so that it's not just all lawn uh, and that students be able to play in, in and amongst the areas. They're not running through these areas right now because they're you know, young plants. Um, there's an oak tree picture there. Um, but we hope over time they'll mature and, uh, and be fun places for the students to be. And then you can see a picture of the new slide that was installed. That was installed also with the um, help of G&J um, and an inspector from New England Playgrounds um, that looked at the site plan and we'll be uh, checking out the uh, final installation. Kids were great about not going up the slide or around it because we don't have the mulch there yet and it isn't quite complete. Uh, and oh, and one more piece about the building was that we also had some screens put on the univents outside of the school. Uh, we have had problems with mice in the past, and teachers have reported that they'd seen mice jumping into the univents. Um, on the inside of the univent, we do have a screen, but you can't get at it uh, without taking the whole heater off. So we put a, a matching screen on the outside. Um, that was done by Amati. And uh, we also purchased um, push vacuums and sweep and uh, dustpan and brooms for the classrooms, just so that we can keep the crumbs down again. Whatever we can do to deter mice. Uh, and James has been going around patching um, small spots where there used to be a, a water fitting or a little hole in the building. Um, so doing whatever we can to, uh, to respond to that, keep the building clean and looking great. So thanks to again to Jose and uh, James for getting the building ready. They did a fabulous job as they always do. And um, we were open and ready for business today. Uh, the front of your report shows some students heading down the hall with their bags of loot from Target, it looks like. So they had <laughs> they uh, really uh, came in excited and from what I heard had a, had a wonderful first day of school, as did I, and I this will be both as well. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you. That was fun by your board. All kinds of stars and yeah. kids and parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of great energy this morning. Good. Good. Yeah. That concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't think we have any old business, so we can move on to new business.
your summer program would be Kevin a quick recap. Uh, of the summer oh, program? actually, yes. Um, and I did speak to that in my report, unless uh, there's any other questions. No, nope. went off with, without a hitch. So review of the opening days of school regarding PD and first yeah, day. I think we've alluded to the energy and yes. the mm -hmm. way things work and the opening PD for teachers was excellent, I think, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the dibbles. And um, I made a little PowerPoint, which was a unique kind of It was very unique kind of and very so, well done. Purely who I am, and I want to make sure people knew who I was what I believed in, what my philosophy was. And I sent that out to uh, the staff. I sent it to those that couldn't attend to, but it doesn't have a narrative with it. So you might say, well, what do you put that there for? But I'll, I'll put it in the drive so you can at least have that. And um, not that good an opening of school that I've seen. They had the 10 a.m. flag raising, mm -hmm. annual flag raising today. All the yep. kids were right there. The Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, mm -hmm. Jose Garcia did the honors with two kids that came out and helped Thank hoist you. the flag up. And it's the first time I've seen that. Awesome. Great. It's really so, nice. Feels good. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm glad the kids had a great first day. So moving on to contract negotiators. And the only part here is to see if you folks would um, deliberate and appoint your two members to the negotiating team. The ones from the teachers team are Maddie Padero and Rick Lucian. Uh, I met with them today just to sort of lay the groundwork and said that tonight, hopefully, you folks will appoint your two reps. Uh, they're hoping that Tuesdays would be an acceptable day for a meeting. So it would either be before a school committee meeting marathon, till one night with one activity, or on those odd nights. And the uh, goal at least I had, and if you endorse that, is to try to get going fairly quickly and so that you have some idea of where things are at by the time you get too far into budget time so that that's not an obstruction to that. They are willing to do that. Um, I have some proposed ground rules that we would talk about that you folks would obviously have input in. They would have input into. Um, there's a calculator that I've always used for the scale itself that allows either side to have it and just plug in what if this happens, what if that happens, and it basically runs the entire operation. It says, well, it would cost you this, what would cost you that. And then the language things obviously would be you know, different sorts of things. Uh, the first set of meetings, the first one would just be Introduce each other and approve ground rules and set meetings. Uh, the second one would be, would be to exchange proposals. And then folks would have a couple of extra meetings to add proposals. And then there'd be negotiations, meetings, side. The goal of trying to get to a satisfactory resolution by uh, November is possible. So, it is possible. That would be my goal. So all, all you would do tonight is if you could entertain me by providing the two names and I'll set the first meeting with those folks. Go from there. And it's two people that sit on the school committee now. What's that? Two people that sit on this committee now. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so it doesn't have to be two, but um, you could do it with one. Uh, except that doesn't sort of bring along the next person, if that board member is not there anymore, right. then there's a whole new learning phase. So sometimes yeah. boards will do, you can't have more than two because you're establishing a forum. Wow. So yeah. that um, typically there's somebody who has some experience with negotiations and then someone who would like to learn and be part of that as the sort of tag team person. And um, that way you have continuity going forward in the, in the processes. You would not only have the teacher negotiation, right after that, you'd have the support staff negotiation. Both, both those contracts are up this year. 
Um, oh, it's a, it's I'll a throw fairly my big. Um, I am. Um, I'm pretty interested in this anyway. I do do a lot of teacher contract negotiations, but not in a unionized environment. And so that that's both. I would fit both of those categories of new and some experience. Um, but certainly like amateur when it comes, with the exception of. I was on this committee when we worked through the contract, um, our, the last contract, and um, that was interesting that this would be more, uh, more involved. Yeah, I, I'd be willing to throw my hat in too. I was involved in the last negotiations for both contracts. Great. And if you felt like you needed some of the more experience, I'm happy to sit back as well. If Greg or Mariana if you want to do it, you know. Nope. nope, I can't get to that. I think I should learn first and then hopefully be here for extra negotiations. Definitely. We would be able to give the board updates periodically in executive session of yeah, we did that last what time. the issues, uh, what are yeah, the obstacles, yeah. uh, because you folks would ultimately have to approve mm -hmm. any deal oh, sure. so have that sort of hit you at the last moment would be a difficult kind of thing so i would think every school committee meeting time we've had a previous negotiation you get an update on what happened yeah. in exactly the same my one shortfall is if it, it, it could it would be hard for me to do every tuesday so if it could be an hour early on the school committee nights that would be a lot easier for me to, to be able to do it yeah then that would actually work better for yeah too. Yeah. To have it on a school committee. Yeah, yeah, it just starts in June 6. Just goes right The proposed ground rules talk about a meeting length of no longer than two hours, no less way. mutually extended. Yeah. Uh, after two hours, so it would be it's ugly it would be, or tired or whatever. Does it have to be a two hours? No. Or could it be? No, and I think an hour. Both sides are prepared well yes. in advance, right. have prepared their teams. Yeah. We can do a lot in a in an effective hour. Great. And then at some point, uh, the two members that get appointed, I think, need to decide what type of role you want your superintendent to play in that. Um, some places, they're just advisors to the board. And I've always been involved in a pretty help people through the issues, uh, almost like a mediator, and provide all the background information and say, you can do this, you can do that, this is what would happen. Um, yeah, and our last, I think Tony, Tony led, he led. Yeah. Yes. yes. We were the supporters. And that's basically what I did in Rockford. I, I led the negotiation. Right. Right. I didn't want to come here thinking, hey, this is what I do, and the folks say, no, you don't. You, Lead away, Rob. You sit over there. And I have no, no issue with you. Yes, yes, please. And I think they're fine with that. Uh, uh, the other thing is part of the ground rules, and they're theoretical. Um, some teams, uh -uh. Well, if you could go right on now, go to the Masconomic website and pull up their public negotiations that they voted to have their negotiating meeting be in public so people can come, their staff can come, wear t shirts with certain colors or all that. That's not the way you should propose to do it, I think, should be behind closed doors so that. Uh, is just the teams, but um... yeah, we want to build an environment right where I mean we're all the same. We're all the same team, and 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 people have different points of view, you know, in right. getting there. I mean, um, Ms. Racine and Ms. Bader are really top notch, experienced educators, and looking at yeah. I'm also them. interested if, if we could do it of having interest based negotiations so that they're. Right. Uh, there a win win. You don't hide stuff. 100%. You, you exchange your shoes. Yeah. Uh, you say why or why not. You don't play right. games with numbers yeah, and no. put them out here yeah. thinking maybe you'll end there. Me, that's just that's a waste great. of time. Yes. I can be so realistic. Yes. Try to legitimately say why you can do X or Y or can't do X or Y. Right. And, and not have it as a bargaining chip that, well, we'll do that if you give us this. Yeah, but, uh, to me, that doesn't build good relationships. And the, the other thing that I think is important in the way we do business is that the reps that come from the union's office, that they be consultants, not 
sitting in the room while the meeting is going on. And the same thing, if you if they had a consultant, you might want to have your school board, if you had one, sitting here at the same time. When I walked into Rockport, there was the school lawyer and the MTA person. They're the only people that talk. And they had negotiated against each other in all of the North Shore, Gloucester, Danvers, and That's they were fair. not great friends. And That's I fair. said, this is foolish. And the school committee never said anything. The teachers never said anything. These two hired delegates, for lack of a better word, fought it back and forth. And I don't think that fits well in a school district like you have. Yeah. That it's a eye to eye with the people who work for you. And um, the Brown rules talk about leaving them out of it. And you, you get to a meeting, you're almost going to say, we're going to TA this, but we'd like to have the right to ask our rep, well, what did we just do between now and the next meeting? So you do a TA1 and a TA2. You tentatively agree, and then you nail it at the next meeting that we agree. Because you might want to call your lawyer or whatever. What's the spinoff of what we just did? And they might want to call their rep at the, at the central office and go, you know what we just got or agreed to, or what should we do? And have those people not be in the room. If the things fall apart, either side has the right to say, all right, game over. We're going back to traditional uh, bargaining practices, including having our folks be in the room. They've got difficult. I've never been involved in a difficult negotiation since I've been a superintendent. It doesn't mean I won't see be, us going be involved in one. But um, 20 years we've been able to settle a fair contract, I think, that both sides agree to in four or five maximum productive meetings that people feel good about. So it's good. If you folks are on board with that kind of philosophy, then Yes, 100%. I'll, I'll work 100%. to make that happen. Please. I think as long as we're kept apprised, um, you know, I mean, I negotiate contracts every day in my career. So, you know, it's something that I would definitely want to be kept in the loop of and just see the status as it goes along. So it sounds like that's what we're proposing. So sounds good to me. Do we need a motion to approve the representatives that we're looking at? Yeah, yeah. All you're doing tonight is giving me a lot of other sort of swirling yeah, yeah. background. Okay. Yeah, we're disappointing. The polls are nice to point to okay, sure. bargaining members for the school committee team. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to appoint. Um, <laughs> Beth Anderson and Patty Harris. <laughs> <laughs> to be the two representatives for the school committee on behalf of the negotiations with the uh, NTA. I saw All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm just Aye. Aye. So I was going to step in Beth, there. Beth, <laughs> Beth, 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 Beth. Okay. On to item D. We have another committee. Related to one of my goals was to. Um, bring back to life the strategic plan that right now you had one, but it planed out in 22 and didn't have anything for 23 or 24. It ran through August of 2022, your existing strategic plan. And what I'd like to do is get another strategic plan committee going and to set it up as a three-year rolling strategic plan. So every year things fall off that are either completed or no longer are pertinent and then new items can get added, but the plan takes on a sort of life of its own and progresses. There are some places that say, no, we do a five-year strategic plan. When you get done, we do another one. I think having a rolling one is more effective. And then you have a committee that's part of that strategic plan. So can you tell us a little bit more about what the strategic planning is? Is it like... Yeah, they might be as simple as we're going to 
build in addition to this school as one of the facilities part of it to be planned. Another might be that you're going to adopt a uh, certain academic approach. You know, maybe you're going to go to all differentiated learning and self-paced learning. You're going to, the most far-fetched one, which was used to be my dream, is take away grades and you work kids through standards at their own pace flexibly and that I might be a 10-year-old doing two years ahead math with a group of kids that are of the same ability as me, but my English skills aren't so quite so good. So the group I'm with is a little further back, but you progress through the standards and teachers then aren't grade level teachers, they're concept level teachers. That's exactly it's what we do with my, my it's alternative. And, and I, I love that, that. but but yeah this is my dream small school we could do this i'm not as um convinced that you can really pull it off and that people don't really understand it but i think if you went from thirty thousand feet and you came down here and you had a bunch of kids that needed to learn you wouldn't just say all right you're in first grade and if you happen to know the stuff and it's not getting any further for you. Well, then just, just hang back and wait. Yeah. And if you're stuck with it, uh, we're not going to put you in another group or try to identify why you can't get it. We're going to just not have grades. Please go to the Johnson Schools Academic Learning Center, progress through the standards. Okay. So, so it's sort of like, focused on the future of the school, maybe what the issues are, exactly. what we're trying to improve from the exactly. survey. And then it's all about sort of future planning. Yeah. Okay. Doing a corporation or whatever. So, we're gonna have a new product. We're gonna do whatever. Yeah. And it's different than just the ongoing daily stuff. It's the hopes and dreams for the future. And some of them you can accomplish, some you can. Rob, do you tend to do more strategic planning in conjunction with budgeting? I've always done them hand in hand because there's always a financial component to most strategic plans. They talk about that as part of it, but they don't let it be a, a barrier to the dream. You know, and they they try to have it be more about the hopes and wishes if you maybe didn't have financial obstacles, possibly. But there could be an aspirational part of the finances too. Oh, for example, like that. You if you to say, so, no, the, the, this has got guardrails on it. Yeah. We can only uh, present things that are uh, definitely achievable that we can pull off. Oh, you can always move something to another year. You can roll it forward. Exactly. It can still be part of the dream. But that's yeah. the beauty of a three year rolling plan is saying we're not in the uh, the economic position to retool this whole school like that. but since it's such a noble endeavor, let, let's keep it as something we might want to still dream about. Because who knows, and 10 years from now. And what resources would we need to get there, yeah. right? There's yeah. always other grants. And and the strategic plan committee will talk about what they want it to be. It's what I'm interested in tonight is who should be on that? Who should I get? I was going to ask, what's the composition of one of these typically, Rob? One more time, Greg. I couldn't play here. What's the composition of a committee like this? Would it oh, be yeah. like one or two school committee members or have, a school committee uh, or how? Teacher reps. It would have Kevin. It would have myself. It would have a couple of parents who are either spammed out and asked for who's interested in, or you get them from the PTO. Um, it would have um, maybe a municipal official, or maybe. Tony would be asked to be part of it or whatever, a couple of school committee members. And um, they meet probably once a month and they pull together a plan that has to come back for approval to the school committee. And each year they meet to, okay, we've done this. It's no longer on the plan. I'd like to add that. And you approve the next phase of the three-year rolling strategic plan. I can show you a sample of one that you know, we used to use in Rockport. And a lot of it was, I'm not, I'd say we accomplished everything we had listed on that point. It's, so this is just like ringing my ears about, we've had so many decisions to make in the last 
two years, you know, with all of the um, planning, with uh, where the kids staying at the school, where we set it yep. the middle school, we found a new superintendent. We've had so many things going on, but my ears are ringing about this because I think what we had decided was like, we really do need a strategic plan and a community-based approach to like what sort of the future looks like for exactly what the kids. It's about it. um, That's the bullseye of what the focus yeah. of that committee would be. So I think it's, you know, it's ironic because it's been on my mind and especially hearing that the elementary schools in Swampscott, I'm sure you've heard that the three have now joined mm -hmm. in this brand new beautiful yep. school. Yep. And so I think like, all I can think of is, wow, Nahant joins in seventh grade at the middle school and all of these kids now are joining in um before they reach the fifth grade at the middle school whereas before they would all meet at fifth yep. right so it's been i've been thinking a lot about like okay we need to kind of get it was on the back burner but i think we need to figure out a way it's a bigger disadvantage to us in my opinion in that situation so i feel like this should be i think a big topic for the strategic planning okay. for knowing the, the situation that you're in where your kids don't you know, like in Robert, they go all the way up through grade 12. Or whatever. Yeah. They've got the ability to choice out in Rockport, right. and Gloucester, and Manchester, Essex. And some of the plan is about well, how do we keep the kids from wanting to go to Manchester, Essex, and not yeah, stay in Rockport. I mean, Yours I'm, is a little more right in your face. Yeah. And um, with those small class sizes, you. Yeah. So anyway, it's it, it, it you're just ringing my one, ears about this. One of the pillars in your plan would be about. The future plan sort of centered on the future of the school yeah mm -hmm. it, there's also Keeping kids here right there's a great opportunity also for us to a bring up we spent some time talking about uh a blended grade model um yeah. yeah that came out of parent discussions and uh testimony and a conversation that uh Mr. Andrews and Mr. Parent Kelsey spent some time on it didn't um we didn't have enough time for it to hold water but this would give you the time to really flesh that out in the event the classes because they are so small it, there's some volatility there as we talked about at the beginning of the meeting this the second part that has come up from time to time and i think about it always um mr andrews when you talk about um some of the projects that are really near and dear to your heart is that with your science background and the placement of our school in um i as an educator i think that we we not intentionally, but we undertap some of the resources that we have here around science, marine biology, conservation, et cetera. And um, it's as a person who does do competency-based education for a very, very different community um, or group of communities, there is some synergy with the idea of um, project-based learning, uh, blended classrooms in some ways, and, um, and where we could really tap more into what is truly special and it, it, it really you can't in a way you can't find anywhere else about the that's hockey. exactly what it's yeah strategic yeah, yeah. Thing that you do. one of the real quick examples in when rockford and romans going around not because kids didn't want to be there so they couldn't afford to buy a house there exactly so they were living in gloucester or whatever and maybe not choicing in was how do we keep the rockport schools going and one of the charges of the strategic plan was, well, why don't we look at becoming an innovative school through the Massachusetts law and yeah. work ourselves on a theme, like uh, a school centered on in Rockport is going to be the fine arts, mm -hmm. specifically music because of the Shaylin Room and all that, and then be able to attract kids not by choice, but through the innovative program from all the surrounding towns and it would be based on the arts, Rockport Fine Arts School or whatever. Now, it never happened, but it was a dream in that plan, and it was a way to keep the enrollment up for the Rockport kids over there. You would bring in more than the choice kids. Well, that's not the kind of phase you would have. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, an example of what a strategic plan of dreams about. And then it comes to you, and you have to then make those things happen in reality. Exactly. You want to speak from reality. I volunteer to be on the strategic planning yeah. committee. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I mean, you guys know I, I loved being on the school committee, but I, I haven't. I've been saying for months that I was gonna not stay much longer, much longer. But I, I don't anticipate that I'll stay 
the whole year, but I can definitely see myself at least transitioning to help in that sort of capacity. So much you said. Gonna change your mind. <laughs> Be different negotiations. I would think of some fixed idea of how it, how it was going to come out. It would be more like facilitating the yeah, agreement with this community and, yeah. and as many stakeholders as you could have. Kevin, yeah. the, yeah. the school committee rep or two. You know, I, I can put my name for it for as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then a town official. Yeah. Only oh, yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, we could get Tony to be part of it, not take too much of his time. I think that'd be ideal. I think too. Uh, and then it's how do we select parent and community input? We have to all be parents. I could spam it out and see who's interested. Yeah, no, let's no, spam it out and see who's interested. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. like your parents were spread the word too. You don't want it to be too huge it becomes unwieldy. Well, if it that were, works. let's say that's 50 works. people applied, it's not going to happen. But if if they did, right, like that's a happy problem. And then you can kind of like do a random lottery or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, or first come, first serve. First come, first serve. I actually think it might be more popular than like, like over that. Right. I like it. I think that would get me started. It's you great. Think of any other members that should be there. Yeah. Thank you for bringing this up. Um, is there anyone else that we think should be part? And what about retired teachers that live in town and fabulously lovely ones about the town school? Not one I'm thinking of. And my guess, maybe somebody from the Council on Aging, probably would have been doing. Um, but yeah, I I definitely can. We can spread the word. I think I think parents would really be interested in something like that. I I think. You do hear that in those surveys, the 19 people that weighed in is, you know, find a way to keep kids wanting to stay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that was what I'm that's begging for that right. kind yeah, of I agree. committee. I think. And watching our dwindling numbers, there are other people that are concerned. That's about right. That right. Exactly. Right. That, that's but, right. but then also right. tapping into your resources. Right. Right. What's that? Say it again. That was one of the major parental threats that came yeah. there about, you know, trying to keep this a viable school. Yeah. But there's like there's a healthy ecology committee. I mean, um, uh, population here like people really care about um climate. There's artists, you know, here. Um, and it, there's a lot. There's there's a lot. The sailing club is huge. It does like, tons of things with the golf course. Like, there's lots of people that provide here for for our kids that aren't necessarily in the school system. You know, that I think we could tap into. That you're really actually great about tapping into every year with you know taking kids to all kinds of things that happen in the the historical society, yeah, yeah. Um, the people with the garden that mm -hmm. everybody went to on the street um, with the daisies. And um, yeah, so. I don't know if this, I don't know why it would be a conflict, but I almost wonder if it would be helpful to have a teacher from a Swamp Scott school also be part of it. Like my, maybe I could give my sister. <laughs> yeah. Um, whether it's a middle school teacher or staff or high school. I mean, I think like the bridge might help it help it might help us kind of bridge the two together. Um Good. just a thought. I'm gonna ask my sister and I'm saying that well, we'll I think we that to the base membership of the committee to decide if they want to expand to a part at large seat or something like that. Yeah. Well does she live in she my lives? sister does, yeah. So yeah. I could see if she could try and join. And my the neighbor across the street actually is a long lifelong Justin, you might know him Mariana Justin. He's lived here a long, long, long time. He bought his family's house. Do you see it? Uh, maybe he's a yeah. teacher, like an eighth grade teacher. Oh, yeah. 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 Something like that. He teaches at the high school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the time commitment, the negotiations is going to sort of be right up there. But it's, I'm not going to put this off to the spring. But I would think we'd have an initial organizational type of meeting. We'll have to get some initial thoughts on, on paper. Certainly before Thanksgiving. So. Yeah, great. I think that's great. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good on that. The main motion. motion. Yes. Yeah. Um, I make a motion to uh, appoint, accept the volunteering spirit of um, Liana and Mariana to the uh, committee, and the strategic planning committee, on behalf of the school to represent the school committee. Do I have a second? I second. 
this is the worst motion in history. It's okay. <laughs> I can know your lesson. <laughs> Ayana, All in favor? Ayana, All in favor? Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 Now we have one more item under new business, and that is the reminders. That's all it is. Oh. Packet. Yep. There is a state law that says within a year of becoming a member of the school committee, thou shalt get eight hours of training in how to be a board member. What happens if you maybe didn't do that? Yeah. yeah. And you're not new. Yeah. You should still get there, I don't think there's any. There's no line. Cop that runs around yeah. checking on this. I don't think there's anyone in Jesse that says, Prove to me that all of your board members are certified in charting your course. Yeah. Uh, the, the dream is you learn about board relationships, uh, oh, relationships with the superintendent, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, open meeting law, this is probably the biggest public records law, That's conflict right. of interest, but it does involve going away for a day, some locations, the two that are presently hosted Very are. Well. In uh, Plymouth and North Adams, right. it used to be online, and then they, they, they yeah. took that option away. So that's why. Oh, okay. They, they, they used to be online. Yeah, yeah. Seen, it was on twice. Twice. Oh, they on they don't do it at all online anymore. I don't think so. I don't understand. And I think there was just a meeting in Burlington, maybe in like June. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. So, I'm sorry, Burlington in June. I, no, there was one in Burlington. That just happened. I'm saying a little bit closer in location. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and you would be reimbursed for your mileage and your uh, paid to go. But if there's a fee for charging the course, it's not. Johnson School pays for that. But it does mean, Mariana says, you can go to work and um, show your family to go and, and you like. Uh, my only job is to remind board members. Your responsibility when they're here to do this. So okay. There's your information. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other committee business that we'd like to discuss? Uh, we have a announcement. Oh. Kevin, tell us. Yes. Um, I have an announcement that um, our first grade teacher is going to be leaving the school, uh, um, Molly Santora has taken a job in Connecticut um, outside of teaching. Outside? Um, and um, she's going to be, she's uh, informing parents tonight. Um, she'll be here for, she's, she'll definitely be here for three weeks. Okay. Um, right. And um, it's time of year to look for a new teacher. Yeah. Um, um, but we've already advertised it. Um, okay. And you know, Rob and I met on it today to think about some some strategic ways that we could fill this gap. Um, so it is unfortunate. It, it um, is, especially that she has to start and then leave. That's yeah. tough on the kids. Yeah. That's it's really hard tough hard on the kids. Yeah. 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 All we know is we just didn't steal her. Or she's not mm -hmm. jumping for unhappiness or anything like that. Um, her letter was very positive. Mm -hmm. um, it is what it is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we are trying to solve it as I don't think there's a rich applicant pool probably at this time. Mm -hmm. And um, there are some possibilities internally. Mm -hmm. We have to sort of run through. Yeah. And, uh, Can you remind me please who the other first grade It's not Maddie Federo. Okay. So we have about uh, 15 students in Ms. Santora's class, and we have 13 in Ms. Spadero's class. Okay. So 28 all together. Okay, thanks. That was the first thing we wondered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyone could do it. Yeah. Four yeah. Grade, it's, it's, it's it's not, it has two teachers, but it's not a massive fourth grade either. They combine 23. That's right. Right? Yeah. Fourth mm -hmm. grade. So there's a possibility of shifts, this or that. Mm -hmm. um, related to that, we part of the discussion. There's a um, new student probably coming without going into any details who would require EL services. Yeah, oh wow! Uh, no first language mm -hmm. ability. All Portuguese uh, from Brazil to Nahan, uh, and we don't have an EL program. 
So we're going to have to find out how we deal with that particular aspect. Oh, what grade? Fourth grade. So we believe that. We believe that. We're not sure. 2024. Okay. So they haven't registered fully yet, but yeah. they came to uh, inquire and um, so. If this was Gloucester, they would be plugged into the EL program and the person who's hired to oversee the EL program. Kevin said, well, that's what Tony did. <laughs> he called Tony and goes, what are you talking about? Yeah, we never had any. <laughs> I had an EL every day once when I was whatever. Yeah. And so we don't have any yeah. operation for that. Does Swamps got them under EL? Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Go to the website uh, for Desmond. Yeah. But it's part of the whole sort of staffing situation possibly mm -hmm. what we can or can't do depending on what our posting provides us. Yep. Maybe there'll be a teacher out there that says you know, maybe young if it was mid year, believe it or not, someone resigning mid year, sometimes we get a January graduate from a school who's already been through school teaching and it's their first job is just like hiring them for the year. It's unfortunate, but it's it's good for Molly and and it's uh, part of her career dreams. Something good. So could I ask you a favor, Mr. Andrews? Do you think at the next meeting you could just bring a breakdown of how many kids we have? in each grade and who the teachers are. Sure. Yep. That's so that's easy. I mean I, that's it's online, a, is it? It's no, it's not online, okay. but it's um it's at my fingertips. Do you mind? Is that okay? No, nope, all right. And I can I can send it to you before that. All right, that'd be great. I just it just helps me to see it like yeah. laid out. You know the other, yeah. the other chart is like where there was most helpful parts. You know, if um one's the one that had it's like a grid and it went by year of how the kids are going through one class and the next yeah. and what the numbers look like mm -hmm. in the class, you know, that, and you kind of read it like this. Sure. You that so like that, 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 that cohort over time. Yeah. Over co yeah, the cohort. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the same group time. of students. Yeah. 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 And then how yeah. They, yeah. yeah. That was sure. we got a lot of time. Okay. Did, yeah. Yeah, I can I can generate one of those and I'll email Thank you, you so the much. um and you're looking for a class a grade, no number teacher students. Number per class and the teachers. Yeah. You got it. Thanks. Okay, well, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Sure thing, spread the word. No, yeah. yeah. I've reached out to the teachers too, and they might know someone. Mm -hmm. well, we have a lot of teachers who are recently in school. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yes. great idea. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my. Are there any other announcements? No, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Should I make a motion? Yes, so no other announcements. Yes. Um, can I make it a motion, please, to adjourn our meeting at 8.25 p.m.? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bye, Greg. Bye, Greg. Sorry, I couldn't make it. Oh, no that's worries. okay. It's all good. No, no, no. no Zoom counts. It does. It was great to see you all. Oh, shoot. Were we supposed to have made a motion to change the school committee meeting? Or I did that already. We did, did that. that. No, nope, oh. you did that. <laughs> yep. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. Great. Now I can go play in a golf tournament out in Western Mass past Springfield. So hey. thank you all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. um, have a great night. Yeah, you too. Thanks. So I am not here for the September 10th. So who sure. should I be passing this computer to? I can do it. Are you sure? Yes.